I would like to share with you the story of how I got started in the web development industry. This is the story of how I became a programmer and eventually landed my dream job. Periodically at Crossroads, I take part in speaking at the weekly chapel time. And this usually happens about once a year. However, this year, I already did it this summer, and it's sort of fallen into my lap last minute to speak at chapel again this week. Um, I tried to weasel out of it by getting somebody else on my team to speak. And in doing so, I, I joked with him that if he didn't, I would have an AI write the entire message for me. And then we started playing with some of the AI tools that are on the internet, and it was like really fascinating. So I kind of went off on a tangent, this deep dive of how AI can help do writing and things like this. And it wasn't less work, uh, so, but I wanted to share some of the things that I've learned. Uh, at this time last week, I didn't know what I didn't know about artificial intelligence, where the tools are in terms of the consumer level, um, ease of use. And so here we are, and uh, I really had this plan to break it down as simple as I could for me. Really, it just came down to six simple steps, three for me and three for artificial intelligence. First, I had to write an outline. Second, I would get an AI to write a full script based on that outline. Third, I would need to record 30 minutes of my voice so that AI could work with it. Fourth, I needed um, an AI to generate an audio using the script and my voice sample, synthesizing one audio file. Next, I would need to record a video sample using a setup like this. And then finally, using uh, an AI to marry the video with uh, the audio file, doing a lip sync, and then I can show that at Chapel. For this video, I'm going to walk through the tools that I used and the process that I followed to have AI do all this work for me. Currently, AI writing is an emerging technology and like anything else, there's about a million ways to do it. I wanted to find something that was just really simple and not that expensive to use. I didn't want to have to mess around with too many APIs. I tried with a couple, some resources were broken with NPM and it wasn't building, it wasn't working. I needed it to be simple. So I Googled it, I found a website called writer.me and I was able to get by using that. Before I get started with showing you how Writer works, I did want to show you a couple of weird examples uh, that happened along the way. Um, so here, this is a screenshot of the interface. I was using a casual tone in a blog section writing. I liked blog section for writing just general and email for explaining to one person. And I did play around with that a bit. Anyway, I entered, I got started by reaching out to a pastor, which incidentally has resulted in a deep friendship. Uh, I think I tried like good friendship, long friendship. I, I experimented a bit uh, and then I hit write for me. And then this is what I got. Uh, I can just read paragraph two. I knocked on his door and he opened it. He was eating a bowl of cereal at his desk with milk all over it. He looked at me with this really funny look on his face because I'm not sure what he expected to see when he opened the door. What? That is so hilarious and creative. Um, this tool is probably not intended to be used the way I was using it and having it write almost 90% or more of a message. Um, but here it just created an anecdote. So if you're if you're using this as an assistant, you would see, hey, this is an opportunity for a lighthearted moment. If it feels good, I, I thought it was weird. But then here, here's another very similar example. Um, what I wrote was, more opportunities came after I left busy agency work for a smaller software company. Um, and what it wrote also massive leaps from what I entered, but like eerily correct. <laughs> um, when I left busy agency work for a smaller company, I had more opportunities. Management was open to new ideas and projects that I wanted to try out. That was true. Um, where was the other ones? Um, Oh yeah, I spent the next three years there. I spent four years there. Uh, and they treated me like family and really nurtured my talents. It was one of the best decisions I could have made. That is a huge leap from what I entered and it was totally correct. Like that was pretty awesome. Um, yeah, and down here I wrote history, background, nerd. I wanted those things to flavor it. History, like I'm telling a story about what, I, what has happened in my background 
and I am a nerd. So I thought it might influence it. This is the actual live tool uh, here. I, I'm paying for it at this time and I can convert from English to other languages. I did play around with this uh, with a friend who is bilingual and he said the French was as good as you would hope. And there's also a bunch of different tones. I used uh, convincing and casual most of the time. And then there's the different formats. So I mostly lived in blog section writing as well as email, but th there are just a ton and uh, pretty sales oriented. So that was my wife's number one critique. So I wrote all, I wrote an outline in my own words. It generated sentences and my wife said, that's not how you talk. Uh, whereas when I read it, I was like, oh, that's pretty good. That's how people talk, but I don't talk like other people. And my wife is an expert on how I talk. So that really stuck out to her. Uh, so I'm going to go to blog section writing and I have a little something here in my clipboard. This is a shift in the traditional chapel message type to a more informal lunch and learn format. Okay, so it added more informal, really kept my structure there. Sometimes it throws it right out the window. The idea behind this change in format is that students are in their 20s, not their seniors. They are able to have a more engaging experience by attending an informal lunch with peers and professors. So yeah, it wants me to give some background. Maybe that would be helpful. Oh, I guess I did have some and it didn't paste in. Um, that is interesting. So let's compare that to an email. We'll soon be able to think of the topic of AI, so we'll shift from a traditional chapel message to a lunch and learn format. That's interesting. Sometimes I am a little bit long-winded and it has just jumped to the to the main nut of the issue and it is it is front-loaded that. I like that. If you, if you would like to join us, please RSVP for the next date. Here it is being sales oriented. It is not just taking my information as here's what's gonna happen. It has a call to action. It wants you to RSVP. Really interesting. Um, join us in our next lunch and learn session on the topic of artificial intelligence. So it's fleshed out the AI to make it even more welcoming. It's not as obscure. We're not using industry acronyms. Uh, we'll be presenting some of the most recent research and developments in this field, as well as how it can be applied practically in your own life. It's going to be a fascinating time. I could use that verbatim. Like that is completely uh, what the thing is going to be about. So anyways, lots of really amazing things that it does. This has been a real treasure to play with. However, um, not everything that I entered turned into something so usable. Uh, there were there were times where it just got really specific or if I wanted to be specific, it, it wouldn't be. All in all, uh, this tool is really good. It can be super effective in writing for other languages. And uh, as a writing assistant, it really helps you to flush out sort of like a structure. So yeah, this tool is really eye-opening. After I had a working script, it was time to create the audio. So I used a tool called Descript. It couches itself as a podcast editing software. However, by recording my voice and giving it a fair sized sample to work with, it was able to synthesize my voice and I, all I had to do is paste in the text to get the audio. This is the Descript web page. It's descript.com. Here they have some pretty good marketing materials. You can see what they do and the different ways you can use this. To get started, I had to record 30 minutes of my voice. So first you need a waiver and um, this is like to legally protect them and to just make it really clear what you're about to do. Um, you can't use somebody else's voice. You have to authorize this yourself. And then I recorded 30 minutes of this. It just so happens I recognize this script as being from an episode of Planet Earth uh, narrated by David Attenborough. When I recorded, I was feeling just a bit under the weather and that combined with the fact that this is like such a seriously delivered uh, piece of text, I think I, I read it in sort of a subdued way. Uh, but basically I just called the voice Arly Formal um, because it's me speaking in sort of not like this, but more of a monotone um, formal way. Um, in that way, you might have like an over the top voice and you might have like just your normal conversational voice. Um, so you might record yourself in multiple different ways using that. From there, I went into here and I pasted in this text. Here's my script. And here I can choose the voice from the voices that I have. Check this out. It sounds pretty good. 
Good morning. I hope you're doing well today. I just wanted to remind you that no matter what struggles you are facing, Jesus is with you. He has never left us, and he will never leave us. The so Bible that's tells not us bad, right? Uh, now let's check out, here's, here's a sentence that sounds particularly uncanny. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, when we do a question, shall we? You, you say the we up like, shall we? Um, and it did not sound that, let's pray, shall we? Let's pray together, shall we? So Father, based on the, the reading that I did, I never asked questions. David Attenborough didn't ask questions, so I don't know how it would um, do that. But anyway, here's how you fix it. You just delete, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> Let's pray together. Now, I clicked out of there, and you can see about down in this corner. You probably can't see it. Uh, it says generating overdub. Hopefully, you got to see that before my picture-in-picture -picture is probably covering it. But anyway, uh, now it's regenerated that to this. Let's pray together. Father God. Um, yeah, so there we have it. Uh, so some editing like that is going to be needed. Later on down here, I say, uh, I've worked with such clients as Tim Hortons, Blackberry, Manual Life, Pet Value. But Pet Value isn't spelled like that. It's spelled, spelled one word, no E on value. So it was like Pet Value. <laughs> and yeah, uh, so you have to get in there and you have to spell things wrong to get them said correctly. So that's good. Um, like if you said wind or wind, lead or lead, read or read. There's all these words that are spelled the same way and you need to be explicit. Um, if you get a DR, it's going to say drive or it's going to say doctor. You need to get in there and control that as the author. And this makes it so easy. And just to show you how bonkers this is. Um, uh, it's not going to do that question right, but I just typed in words and it's doing it. David Attenborough never said bonkers. Good morning. How bonkers is descript? I hope you're yeah. doing Yeah, you can say anything. Um, obviously, that's horrifying. <laughs> there are some really scary implications here. Uh, but of course, that is the whole point of why I'm even going to be sharing this message in chapel. Anyways, I've been blown away by this. And yeah, I'm really happy. Can't wait to export this to audio and get to the next phase. Okay, so I showed you how I used an AI to turn point form into prose. I showed you how I used different AI to take prose and synthesize my voice to have it said. Uh, the third thing I had to tackle was to have an AI take video footage of me and then just invent a mouth, do the lip sync for that provided audio. Um, I'm going to link to the technical process that I followed to do that. I was going to walk through it on this video, but somebody else has done such a good job. And I will say, though, that the video that I provided is I made it as, as good as I could. So sometimes you'll see things where people have taken like a talking head that exists in pop culture and then take, you know, somebody else's voice and, and put them together. Um, but since I was going to do a six minute talk and try and show it to the organization, uh, I wanted like all the nodding and the hand gestures to sort of match. So what I did was I played the audio on like my phone next to me and I looked at this camera and I nodded and I went like this. And so when you watch it, like there's a part where I, I pray and I, I close my eyes, but it's like a couple beats late. Uh, that's because just in real time, as I'm looking at the camera and listening on my first take, I'm just like, oh yeah, I should close my eyes here. It looks weird. And so that's, that's why it was late. It was because of me. Uh, could I have done a second take? Yeah, absolutely. But I'm doing this for fun as quick as I can. So, uh, the, so the result was uh, I just played it for, for the org. And um, some people there do not know me very well. So I think they're, I, like I just saw in the, on the Zoom, some people are just nodding. And one guy on my team was, looked like a little unsure. I am a graphic designer by profession, but I have always been interested in the web. After the big dot com boom, I started to learn more about coding. One of my colleagues who knows me pretty well said uh, that, like, oh, I was so relieved to find out it wasn't you because you're just like mi missing some of that, uh, that, that joyful, upbeat, you know, 
persona that you have. So uh, yeah, it was really interesting. So I wrote about this more on rlem.com. I'm gonna have that in the description on this YouTube video, as well as the link to the the step-by-step -step sort of weird process of doing the wave to lip lip sync thing. It involves using Google Drive and um, this Google scripting process, uh, which is a little weird um, if, if you're not into that sort of stuff. But uh, yeah, anyway, I learned a lot through doing this. And yeah, I shared a few other thoughts on the blog about just, just how to think about this and where I think we're going. Um, just even like in the days after I did record all this, there was stuff in the news about like, an AI wants to have a baby or like an Android and uh, she has citizenship in Saudi Arabia. Uh, and there's also like one of those walking dog things that has like military precision sniper rifle on it. Gosh, it's it's incredible, crazy, sometimes scary times. So <laughs> AI, it's here to stay. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Thank you.